What is up, heroes? This is Minute Zero, and welcome to week three of the CFL. This week we were going up against Sam, coach of the North Ants Ninetales, and a really good friend of mine. Um, you can see his team on screen right now, but I will preface this by saying that Sam is probably my favorite person to play in Pokemon. Period. Um, the battles we've had have been so intense, um, so enjoyable, whether they've been during the regular season playoffs or even championships. Uh, he's a great guy and a great battler, and I always look forward to every chance I get to play him. I've also played with him casually, just in random stuff on Showdown, and there are actually even videos of it uh, if you're curious. But he's a great guy, so I always look forward to this. And I will also preface this by saying I'm a little tired right now, and I'm feeling a little bit of a motivation slump, but I know he is too. Um, it's been a little bit of a lull recently, but part of that's just because I uh, just got back from traveling and, and visiting Lizzie for a while. But anyways, let's talk about his team. His team is actually really odd. And it's funny because Sam always drafts really odd looking teams, but they end up working really well. He's got a couple dragons, Garchomp and Como. Um, both of them can be both offensive or defensive um, superstars. Garchomp, you know, with bulky, rough skin, rocky helmet, can set up Stealth Rock, it can shuffle with Dragon Tail, it has good mixed coverage with Draco Meteor Fire Blast, um, it gets Poison Jab, Aqua Tail, Outrage, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Stone Edge. It's got a whole bunch of stuff that it can really utilize. Great speed tier, great stats, um, very solid Pokemon. Uh, Como, also great. Uh, typing can really. We can run a solid defensive set with something like Body Press, Earthquake, Iron Defense, Stealth Rock. We um, can also run offensive set like Clangorous Soul and um, Clanging Scales, Outrage, or Drain Punch, uh, Substitute Belly Drum. There's a whole bunch of stuff Como can run. And DD Mail, mostly there for the psychic terrain, but can hit really hard despite its relatively meager 105 base uh, special attack. It can actually hit really hard with Expanding Force, a really strong Psychic type move that's stab and boosted by the Psychic Terrain it sets up. And decent speed tier, usually runs Specs or Scarf. One thing I need to worry about is Trick on this Pokemon. Amoongus is a really solid bulky pivot, uh, annoying in that it can Spore and put things to sleep, and it has Regenerator of course. Otherwise it's not too much of an offensive presence, however it does have access to foul play, meaning it's tough for things to set up on it if they're physical attackers. Then there's Togekiss, which I hate going up against every single time. Um, I, I absolutely hate this Pokemon just because of Serene Grace and flinching with Air Slash. And it also can potentially trick. It can run Scarf sets, it can run Nasty Plot, it also has Taunt, it has Reliable Recovery and Roost, it can get rid of Hazards with Defog. It's, it's a pain. <laughs> Incineroar is a very cool Pokemon, very cool pivot with Intimidate, great typing, parting shot, or U-turn for momentum, and also solid offensive attack stat with uh, great moves like Flare Blitz and Knock Off and Super Power for coverage. So definitely a, a threat. The main thing is that it doesn't have access to recovery. Then he's got some bulky pivots again. Uh, Foratris, one of his favorite Pokemon to use. It's so defensively bulky um, with the great typing. It has great utility with Rapid Spin, Volt Switch, Stealth Rock, Spikes, Toxic Spikes. I think, does it get Pain Split? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, that's its main thing that it's, uh, it's Achilles heel is that it can't really recover. But it has great utility and it's tough to take down. Vaporeon, overall, really bulky Pokemon. Thanks to its super fat 130 HP stat, uh, its ability to Wish Pass as well is great, Wish Baton Pass, and it can Heal Bell, much like our Umbreon. It's a great utility on. Alolan Raichu and Pink Urchin, they kind of are a combo, right? <laughs> Pink Urchin sets up the Electric Terrain, can Memento, can set up T-Spikes, can go for Rising Voltage to get off what damage it can, but because Rising Voltage is boosted in the Electric Terrain. But the real thing is the synergy with the Alolan Raichu, which, due to Surge Surfer, has double speed in Electric Terrain. Of course, with the Electric Terrain also boosting its Electric type attacks, uh, Alolan Raichu can hit really hard when you put a Life Orb on it, and when it has access to Rising Voltage, a new move that is far stronger than Thunderbolt in the Electric Terrain. It's also able to run, I believe, Psy Shock and Psychic, so it can hit on the defensive and the special side of things. Uh, it has access to Nasty Plot to boost and Focus Blast for Steel-type and Dark-type coverage, so it is definitely a threat. Cryogonal, it's such a, it's such a derpy Pokemon. It's got Rapid Spin, 
It can, it pretty much only does rapid spin, recover, freeze dry, and it has a couple interesting coverage moves like flash cannon, and it typically runs like knockoff or toxic or other weird stuff. Um, doesn't do a whole lot offensively, but I guess it can because it has a base 95 special attack. It's mostly there for its special defense and its speed, which is absurdly high for something like a snowflake. I don't know, it's, it's, it's such a weird Pokemon. And then lastly, there's Dust Noir, which is actually quite bulky um, and actually packs a punch with its attack stat as well. It has priority with Shadow Sneak and, of course, is a fighting immunity, so it's, it's interesting. Um, I don't really know much. I've seen Dusclops used more frequently as like a bulky pivot, but I don't know. I haven't seen Sam use Dusk Noir, I'm not exactly sure how he would use it. But that's his team. It's overall a solid team. And honestly, when I was building my own team for this week, I had a really, really difficult time. I actually think this might be one of the worst matchups my team has. Just looking at how I can try to account for all the different threats, his team poses, either in Psychic Terrain, Electric Terrain, both um, Bulky versus Offensive, Garchomp and Como, Trick with Togekiss in, in Didi, um, you know, Physical Walls in, you know, Furetra's Special and Vaporeon, Setting Up Hazards, so many, you know, Hazard Control. It's, um, it's really, really difficult for my team to handle this, so I'm a little bit, <laughs> I'm a little bit dispirited going into the match, but I'm going to try my best nonetheless, obviously. So let's talk about the team I did come up with. You guys can... See them all here. Uh, the first member is Halucha. First time we're bringing Halucha. Uh, pretty basic set. Uh, acrobatics, close combat with sword stance and substitute. Substitute is there to set up on anything. Um, or and basically at the very least to put us into our citrus berry range. Which when activated will give us 25% HP. And then we'll activate our unburden which will double our speed. Which is kind of the whole point of Halucha. Acrobatics doubles in power as well and um, hopefully we have a sword stance off before then. One thing to note is that the speed EVs are jolly with 192 speeds so that we outspeed Alolan Raichu by one point when we're at double speed and when he is at double speed in the electric terrain, which may be necessary to prevent getting reverse swept or revenge killed by Alolan Raichu. Um, unfortunately that does weaken our attacks quite a bit, uh, but again that's going to go into the battle strategy of try to chip away at things, and then hopefully we can get to plus two. But yeah, hopefully a late game sweeper, and hopefully something that can threaten Como or Incineroar. Next up is Galarian Rapidash. This is actually one of the Pokemon I first looked at and liked against Sam's team just because of its move coverage. Look at its coverage. It gets Play Rough, Zen Headbutt, Wild Charge, and Mystical Fire. So when you look at his team, it's got Play Rough for Garchomp, it's got Play Rough for Como, it has Psychic Terrain Boosted, um, Zen Headbutt, or just Play Rough for Ndidi, which has Feeble Defensive, Zen Headbutt for Amoongus, Wild Charge for Togekiss, and um, it could have had High Horsepower for Incineroar, but it doesn't. And then Mystical Fire for Ferretris. That's, that's the real highlight. I really hope I get the chance to use that, because that would be really cool. Wild Charge, potentially Electric Terrain Boosted for Vaporeon. Um, Anything for a low and right I guess. But um, yeah, those are those are the main highlights. Put a life orb on it, and it does more damage. It's still not a super strong Pokemon by any means, but it also has a solid speed tier in that I can use it to outspeed Garchomp and most of his team. And if things are weakened, this this at least threatens most things super effectively when it's in and can start to chip away at things. And hopefully catch Ferretris off guard. So yeah, and then the rest of the EVs were configured for Life Orb. You'll notice the 279 HP stat. It's a Life Orb number, so um, that's that. Next up is Chandelure. After Galarian Rapidash and Halucha, I was pretty unsure about how I wanted to build the team, but this Chandelure is, in my opinion, pretty helpful for threatening out stuff like Amoongus and Fortress, which I otherwise just don't really threaten much at all. Um, with anything else in my team. The Galarian Rapidash could, I guess, but it also takes a ton from Sludge Bomb and Gyro Ball, so it's not like it can switch in, and it's not like it can take a hit if it doesn't um, knock it out, knock out whatever it's trying to attack. So I wanted Chandelure. It's also notably a Rapid Spin blocker. Um, he has so many Pokemon that use Rapid Spin, and they can't get rid of hazards if Chandelure is in as they use Rapid Spin, so that's really helpful. 
Flamethrower and Hex. I didn't want to use Shadow Ball because of Como potentially being bulletproof, and I plan on toxicing a lot of things anyways, so Hex is relatively important, um, and or could potentially be boosted. I don't plan on keeping this in against a lot of things that I wouldn't be going for a Flamethrower against anyways, stuff like Como or Garchomp. And so I plan on going for Flamethrower against most things, and if anything is slower than me, I probably don't fear it as much. And what's faster that I need to hit with Hex, um, will do, will still knock it out just like Shadow Ball would, so I'm not too worried about that. So, yeah, hopefully we're able to hit something like Incineroar, or Como o or Vaporeon with Toxic on the switch in, which would be really nice. We have Energy Ball as well to potentially hit Vaporeon harder, or, um, you know, depending on the terrain. But that's pretty much it. Maybe Garchomp as well, if, you know, it's not already toxic or something like that. And Flashfire is there. I chose that rather than Flame Body because he doesn't have a lot of physical attackers that would be going for contact moves I would want to switch into Lure in on. So I don't expect very many fire type moves coming out from his team. Maybe Flamethrower from Togekiss, Fire Blast from Garchomp, or Fire type move from Incineroar, but that's it. Maybe Mystical Fire from Indeedee, I guess, but we'll see. Next up is Rillaboom. Rillaboom, I really like this Pokemon, but I and I wanted to use it so badly, but I just couldn't come up with a great set. So I ended up going with Choice Scarf, mostly for speed control. Um, I wanted to be able to outspeed his Garchomp, Como, his Indeedee with something, and or even his Alolan Raichu before, obviously, uh, Electric Terrain is up. I wanted to outspeed his team with something and be able to do quite a bit of damage with Woodhammer. It's still, I mean, it is adamant in its max attack, so it still does a lot, but it is going to require Chip to get kills on stuff like Garchomp, even if they're offensive. Um, Knockoff is really helpful for hitting things like Amoongus and Foretris and Togekiss and Incineroar and Como, which are all great switch-ins to Rillaboom. It's really weird. He has so many great Rillaboom answers, but I appreciate Rillaboom in this match almost entirely because it, it can mess with the terrain, it can knock off the items on those really problematic Pokemon, and it can get momentum with U-Turn. So that's that's why it's here. Um, for that fourth move, I didn't really know what else to do, so I ended up putting Acrobatics. I was between that and Giga Impact, but the idea is if at some point I need to get knocked off by one Pokemon and I can give up my Choice Scarf, I can go into that and then Rillaboom transforms into something that can actually counter Como o and Amoongus because it has acrobatics, um, which can hit both of those Pokemon super effectively, though it otherwise would get checked by them. So I thought that was pretty cool. The speed tier is to outspeed, I think, uh, max speed Incineroar, because I didn't really plan on staying in against anything else that I potentially outsped, so I didn't really need the speed anywhere else. So the bulk will hopefully um, come into play. For the rest of the team, uh, we've got Blissey. It's pretty pretty standard. Seismic Toss, Stealth Rock, Soft Boiled, and Teleport. It's mostly here for Togekiss and potentially Alolan Raichu. It can potentially wall Amoongus or Indeedee as well. Depends on the sets. Um, but I needed something for special attacks and I needed something to get up rocks because, again, chipping away at his team is going to be really important. Teleport's great for momentum to be able to get in Galarian Rapidash safely or Halucha or Candler or Rillaboom, whatever it may be. Um, that's most fitting. And then, of course, this could also act as a um, status sponge. So Amoongus doesn't do anything <laughs> to Blissey at all. But because I have Natural Cure, if I ever get put to sleep by it, I can just switch out and I immediately gain um, or am cured from that. So that's really nice. This thing, yeah, it's... <laughs> Togekiss is so difficult for my team to deal with. But Blissey is one of my few chances to actually do something about it. And then Toxapex, I needed some sort of physical option and I wanted the ability to have like a regenerator, um, just kind of sponge. Uh, Haze is there exclusively for Como. -O. It could potentially help with other Pokemon, I guess, that set up like maybe Togekiss, maybe Incineroar, maybe Garchomp, but mostly for Como if it's the Omni Boost set. Um, Toxic is really helpful for wearing down things over time to set up for like a Halucha sweep. Recover is obvious. And then Scald is to have some ability to hit his Pokemon that are not 
affected by Toxic, namely Amoongus and Foratris, and uh, I guess to damage other things as well. I have a little bit of Spideff to help out with Togekiss if necessary, but again, I hopefully, hopefully don't need to worry about it. I think, yeah, Togekiss is my big enemy this time around if it's present. It's going to be a mix of Blissey and Chandelure and Galarian Rapidash that will need to take it down, and Pokemon will die. <laughs> so, hopefully, we don't give it any opportunities to set up or get momentum or whatever it may be. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's the team. Again, I'm pretty nervous. I'm excited. Sam's awesome. I always look forward to battling him, so I'm excited. I'm nervous because I really don't feel very confident in this team and it's going to be an uphill battle to try to win, but I know that we definitely can and I hope you guys are looking forward to the match. But until then, this has been Night Zero and this mission is complete.